everyone, welcome back to my channel. Oh, we should have done that at the beginning. One, two, one, two, three. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is not hygienic. Um, so rule one of mukbangs already already broken because the food's not on display that we're eating, and that's like one of the rules. Is it? You right there? Yeah. So we've got new dolls. Which was sent to us by Cindy, Cindy. Hall. She's a regular live stream watcher and a regular Poop Troop member. Thank you, Cindy Hall. This is what they look like. They're just called Mama. But it was not until I cooked it I realised it's spicy and Adam doesn't do spice. Mm, I'm so... going to try it. We should challenge to see if I can eat the whole lot. Wow. They smell good and they look really good, so I'll try it. See how it goes. He can just about manage KFC chicken. That's yeah. how bad he is with spice. And we've also got plain old uh, cheese pizza in the foil still because I couldn't be asked to take it out. So what are we doing today, Ellie? Eat food and talk some truths. I feel like there's a lot of questions because, I mean, I asked you a lot on every single social media platform I had. Questions that you wanted to ask us as a couple that we could answer that were deep, dark and deadly. <laughs> Just anything you wanted to know about us as a couple, maybe quite personal stuff. Get the tea and we'll give you the tea. I don't get what you just said. Internet culture, darling. Oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, can I thank everyone for asking such amazing questions and being on it. They were just really good questions. So the first mm. one. It's always an after taste. Oh. <laughs> Mmm. I don't think they're as bad as I was expecting, but... Do you know I'm really proud of you for eating that? Well, the other day when you ordered a sweet curry instead of spicy mm. because you wanted to enjoy it more, you ended up not liking the sweet, you probably would have been better off with a very mild spice. Oh. <laughs> Let's get into questions. I'm, just, mm -hmm. I'm so happy like you're still eating that. I'm like, oh my goodness. It's, okay. a, it's a little bit painful, but I'm <clears throat> kind of enjoying it. So. Do either of you count porn as cheating? Short answer is no. I just think it, it sounds a bit silly to say yes. I can I can understand why people might have an issue with it. I don't think that getting off to anything other than your partner is a bad thing. Uh huh. It's it sounds kind of um like very very restrictive and like you, you're gonna spend your whole life with the attitude of you're only ever thinking about your partner. You're only ever doing things with. I mean obviously doing things with your partner, but <laughs> I just, I feel as if like um. It's not very know, realistic. Yeah, it's it's kind of like at all fantasy thing isn't it? See I've seen both sides mm. of this because when I was younger and new to everything and quite insecure and new to a relationship, new to the idea of guys watching porn, mm. new to I being don't. naked in front of someone for the first time so like knowing that I'd like let that person into my life yet they were still going elsewhere to like see other things and you wouldn't say that I'm that much of a controlling person right? <laughs> No. But if you saw me <laughs> way back in my first relationship, I was really bad. Like, I'm gonna confess now, I would like sneak onto their phone, look at their history, not to think if they're cheating, because I wouldn't see it as cheating, I would just not like it. And he was really embarrassed, and I didn't even know what like Pornhub was or whatever. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck's that? And then I obviously found out. I was just like so mad and insecure and I was just thinking, why would he need to? Do you get to a certain age and you realise that there's so much more to worry about? What they do when you're not there, mm. which is harmless. You, I, I, I like the whole like, you can look but not touch. Yeah. I kind of stand by that now. I remember I went to the guy's sister <laughs> who we were talking about, spoke to her about it and she was like, I've been with people who have gone off with other girls and you just getting annoyed about seeing naked girls. Is, is it's sweet but it's not necessary <laughs> as long as they're coming to you at the end of the day <laughs> yeah. if it's like an obsession if they're relying on it then yeah obviously it's uh -huh. an issue i think if you're in an understanding relationship and stuff then i don't think you would necessarily yeah. have an issue with it the better relationship yeah. relationship you're in the easier it is to kind of like think about that Mm. Like, because I feel really secure of us two and like, I know that you're happy and content. Mm. So if I saw you like going elsewhere and looking at other stuff, I'd be like, well, he's still happy in our yeah. situation. But if you weren't, I would probably feel a little bit weird about that. Yeah. If some buts and worries in the first place. Yeah. Then you would kind of, your mind would wander a little bit. But like, I literally wouldn't care 
whether you did or didn't in, in this situation. Mm. You kind of got to see the funny side of it. You might see a certain category that your boyfriend's into and be like, oh, I could never be like that. Like, and then you start thinking, oh, I wish I was like that. And then you start like worrying about it and obsessing. Mm -hmm. Or you could just be like, do you know what? Like, I'm never going to be a woman of a different race. <laughs> I'm never going to huh. be a, a monster with tentacles. <laughs> Whatever size zero into. like whatever it is that they're watching mm -hmm. if you're gonna pick that over me then then i have an issue yeah are your lips burning no, but my my like stomach is i'm going i'm putting it in my mouth mm, my tongue on my lips are i'm like... feeling it more in my actual mouth don't take yeah. it seriously there's yeah. a lot worse things that your partner can do the more relationships you've been in you realize that actually that's so harmless <laughs> it's actually quite healthy some, and some couples watch it together as well yeah. And it can help in ways. That was from Elisa. My Alafam uh, <laughs> says, do you think it's okay? Oh, that was the name. Sorry, I thought that was the start of the question. Is it is okay to fancy other people? Juicy, get that tea. I feel as if that's kind of related to the last question in a way, because again, it's like the whole look but don't touch thing. Yeah, you're not said. acting on it, are you? Yeah. I recently watched a video where Zoe and Alfie spoke about this. Oh yeah. And she was like, no, it's not okay. And he was like, oh, really? yeah, it is okay. But then she came to terms of thinking, it's just not okay when it's a friend. Because oh. imagine if I came up to you like, oh, I really fancy your mate. Yeah. But if I was like, oh, I really fancy awkward. Brendan <laughs> Urie. Like, it, like, if it's something unrealistic. I think even with the friend thing, if you said to us, I really fancy one of your best mates, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like, because I'm really chill, I wouldn't really be bothered by it. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, he's a good looking guy. Like, in fact, we, we, we turn it round and we kind of are able to comfortably discuss, like, if we fancy someone and be like, oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I guess fancy is a strange word because yeah. there's, there's like, oh, your mate's hot. Yeah. And then I there's, like, it, find I attractive. fancy, I, yeah, I, like, want them because that's what, that's what happens when you fancy something. Clean play. Well done. I'm well proud of you for eating that. I think it's okay. We discuss, actually. We, like, say, oh, what do you think of them? Or they're nice and then he'll be like oh i don't agree like we just discuss it in a way but it depends how far you want to take that that's when it's a different yeah. story i mean this is the healthiest relationship i've been in like to be able to not worry about things for a start really? and then not only not worry about things but also be open about things and be happy and just be like hey there it is oh that's really cute bethany says i was wondering what his opinion and feelings were about your relationship with your ex being so documented online um only reason i ask is because i'm highly sensitive noodle I'm a highly sensitive noodle and while I'm well aware my boyfriend has girlfriends before me I don't want to physically see that not insinuating you should delete the videos I love how you've documented pretty much your whole life on YouTube cool question because I don't know the answer <laughs> well I would delete them by now if I was sure but would you actually though? unlisted I wouldn't delete them hmm. especially because it's not even that they're up it's the fact people oh, are still did watching you hear them. that? Is that a, your jaw that was my jaw yeah Jesus Christ it didn't hurt it just went a spicy life adam destroys you <laughs> i can see why people wouldn't like it again like there's a trend in that i'm really chill <laughs> i don't really care about things i don't want to go and watch them like because <laughs> no i mean i wouldn't care if i did no, no but imagine but... me i would watch every single one if it was him <laughs> yeah I, I understand that you've been with someone before me and you've had this kind of lifestyle with someone else previously Hmm. And you've shared that and it's out there, but there's not one part of me that wants to go back and watch them right. um, But if if I saw a video with one of your exes in it, it wouldn't bother us anyway because I, I'm aware of it <laughs> Would it make you feel uncomfortable? No. Really? I don't think so. It's kind of like a different life. Like it's it's not you now I've got a question for you. Go on then. Have you ever secretly gone and watched one? Not with your ex. Wow, that's insane to me. The stuff that I've seen with you and your ex is only the stuff that I've seen when I've been with you. Wow, that's really interesting to me. I'm oh. such a fucking nosy partner. I think I've literally broken me jolly. Um, well, at least I can show this to the doctor when I go. Yeah, this is exactly what happened. <laughs> um, oh, something's happened. Jesus Christ, Adam. I can relate to the idea of being like weird about pictures and stuff back in the day. Once again, when I was like new to everything, quite insecure. And quite like worried that I wasn't going to be as good as the rest and all that shit. Oh my god, why are those pictures even still up? And then I'd be like, oh, everyone else is going to see them and they're going to be like, oh, that was their ex. But once again, <laughs> once again now, I now in would encourage it. The way you should need to see it if you're worried about this is it's part of your boyfriend's history without sounding cheesy it made him that, who he is yeah. now and although like we have like funny discussions about dramas and what happened and how bad it was or how good it was and blah blah, blah mm -hmm. at the end of the day all those things mingled and mangled together put you two in the place that you're in and has made him like that 
or yeah. made you like that the same way of your exes. So I wouldn't like <clears throat> someone deleting for part of their history for me just being insecure. Yeah, personally, I don't like to keep things from previous relationships. Uh -huh. So like, I've always kind of given my exes like photographs or like little bits and bobs. Mm. that I'm not going to find useful. Well, that's like Buddhist, isn't it? Living in the moment. I'm such a, a memory hoarder. I look back all the time. I'm nostalgic. That's just me. Mm. But not in like, oh, I miss him. <laughs> it's more, yeah. oh, that was when I was 15 years old and things were like that then. I'm that kind of person anyway. I just keep on to things because it's part of my life, part mm. of who I am. And that's the way you should see it as well. Don't see it as holding on to this girl. It's just a a screenshot of his It doesn't mean you still have, life. like, the same feelings you had for the no. one you were there. I mean, when you come out of a relationship, you're always going to have that little part of you that's still fond of when you were together, even if it was shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're going to still have the, the little spark from all the, the mm. good times and the good feelings, and you're always going to keep that with you, which is really nice. I remember when he was looking for a memory box, a note that one of your exes has sent you, mm. and you were like, oh, I don't really want this, and I was like, no, you should keep it. <laughs> Encouraging him because it's like the opposite to what they're saying. Something my mum told me since I was very little was keep all your love letters, keep all your love notes. It doesn't matter who it was or if he was a weirdo. And I was, I was kind of saying the same thing to him. I was like, you're gonna look back at that when you're old and be like, oh, funny. Imagine if I said to you, get rid of all the photos with you and your past partners. That would the majority of it would be like holidays and really cool stuff that you've done. And technically, you're just getting rid of cool memories. So. Holly asks, how long did it take to say I love you and who said it first? I've got a terrible memory <laughs> and like I kind of, I'm kind of oblivious to things a lot, um, even special moments. <laughs> He's not so, just saying this. I hate the fact that I can't remember things. He genuinely has a <clears throat> terrible memory. Yeah. It sort of became like blessing and a curse because it means that like you, <laughs> you forget, can get away with things yeah you get away with <laughs> shit all the time because he's like oh, i don't really care when did that happen again not not big things that, i'm just talking on, about on top of the fact that i'm really chill anyway mm. and i probably wouldn't be bothered and i'm forgetting things as well so you can get away with murder but when you jog my memory i can remember it mm. so, it's yeah. quite cute sometimes sometimes so ellie said it first when we were at my mom's house first time we went up to see my family and did i say it back immediately Mm -hmm. I, th I can't imagine not. I'm pretty sure I would have. Here's my memory. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so I went up to Newcastle yeah, on plane. Sense. Met everyone. Everyone was really nice. Saw how you were around your family. That's important to me as well. Like if you were a jerk to your family, I'd be like, mm. he's really happy because he's with his family. We're in a really good vibe right now because you're not working. You were like happy. It was on holiday. It was like that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. When I first met this man, it was almost like I was on crack. <laughs> I don't know. Really good. Good vibes buzzing all the time mm. so it didn't take long that was in september and we <clears throat> were official in august july sorry is couple, that long a couple of months in not really because especially like early relationship you're spending so much time together mm. and obviously doing things you really enjoy together and stuff yeah. and it's, it's all really good intense fun yeah so you're gonna get attached quite quick in a lot of cases but then i think i fell in love at a different time Probably more in love when we were like going through more shit together. That's when you fall in love. When you see the downs and the ups, but at this time it was all like up, 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 up. Mercedes, hey girl, says cool, hello man. darling. What would you do if you caught Adam cheating? <laughs> he would not be the person I thought he was, therefore I would discontinue dating him. <laughs> because it just takes so much away from what you are. I've been with someone before who had cheated and continued because I knew that's the type of person they were. I put myself on that line anyway and it happened. I knew, I kind of knew it was. But with you, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, I'd just be so confused. <laughs> What's your opinion? You wouldn't be angry or upset, you'd just be like really confused. <laughs> oh, well, I'd be upset, but Adam? Mm. Is that you? Because I used to be like, you know, that kind of religious attitude where it's like, if you do anything, you're dumped like, instantly and all that sort of stuff. Why would you ever do that? And I used to be like that. So you used to be less chill. <laughs> yeah. I feel like personally what I've kind of gained from my relationships in the past. And I'm not I'm not condoning cheating and stuff. I'm not saying mm. go out and cheat, whatever. I've come to terms with the fact that life's kind of unpredictable. And I mean, even if someone's so one-sided and the, and they'll never ever do anything, mm. there's still that slightest tiniest chance that something might happen sometime yeah. and it's whether you're able to accept that and forgive that 
and know whether it would work if you continued. Like I've I've been cheated on in the past. I loved her so much at the time that I couldn't bear the fact that we'd split up. So I continued mm. and it didn't work because it changed the whole attitude towards the relationship. There was paranoia and stuff constantly and it doesn't work like that. So again, I would be upset and angry and stuff, but if, if a little accident happened and I knew that it was an accident and stuff, then I don't think that's a complete deal breaker. It depends how you feel at the time, I suppose. I guess it it's literally depending on circumstance yeah. but i was literally seeing it as me catching you cheating and it's like a long it was a yeah. pl long-term planned mm. arranged thing that was the way i was seeing it but maybe cheating in general depends mm. on so many Context. things i when i imagined you i imagined you like butt naked with another woman oops ellie's here shit i mean yeah if you weren't that sex with someone that'd probably feel very different <laughs> i suppose that's a point as well because people class different things as cheating yeah I was like thinking... some people class like a text as cheating oh some people okay. class going all the way as cheating right like, what kind of scale are we going by okay right i was thinking sex okay behind my back on purpose yeah. deliberately <laughs> oh but texting another girl there's obviously problems in our relationships mm. and our in our relationship and i would just want to sort that out with you in a relationship with another girl that you haven't slept with yet it's same the same thing i'll be like well what the fuck's going on in a relationship with her. meeting up with her oh right if it was just more than friends or someone yeah. else i love how you're like always going to the root of the issue like what it would be yeah like, but rather then... than just looking at the surface and being like oh this is going on yeah scrap it there'd always be a route <laughs> up until you're literally fucking someone else yeah, you know, I, I love your thought process. It's like a really mature way to think about it. <laughs> I'm so mature. I think I've got a lot of that from my mum though. She's mm. very much, she's very practical. So like if I come to her with drama, she's like, well, have you thought about why they might be doing or saying that? Mm. And I'm like, shut up, mum, as a kid. <laughs> if like you said that you knew I was intentionally going out and I was completely sober, completely in the right frame of mind and doing things with other mm. people, then obviously is an issue. Yeah. And to what degree you went with that uh, would kind of, Again, it's context, isn't it? Yeah. But whether it's forgivable or not, I don't know. But, but getting blackout drunk and something happening, it's not really them necessarily fully in control of doing no. it, is it? So. I hate it when people say being blackout drunk isn't an excuse, which I know mm. people would hate me saying that because it, it's, it's not a reason for it to be okay, mm. but it's a reason it happened. And I think people say just because you're drunk, it doesn't mean you're not capable of your actions. I strongly mm. disagree with that because I've done some terrible stuff when i'm drunk i've blacked out when i've been drunk before and i've been told i did not anything bad but i've, I've did things and i haven't got a clue i don't remember any of it i mean i <coughs> i would yeah you're not as innocent <laughs> no i mean there could have been like some issues behind the scenes which i w yeah, which like were subconscious. there yeah and at the time i wasn't really like listening to that which is why i mm. did stupid shit but but yeah i've just done some terrible things I would understand that because I've been there. So if you did something because you were off your head, I can kind of understand that, but I'd probably get so much shit from my friends. Like, why would you forgive him for that? Mm. But I'm like, because I've been there and it, it's mm. a bit scary and a bit weird. Are you full? Would you like some chocolate or these? Ooh, let's crack it open. So this is another thing from... Cindy K. Cindy! Um, they're mini crackers <laughs> from Belgium. They're sour, and sour cream and onion. Oh, I'm gonna love these so much. I sent to Ellie how um, I love uh, sour cream and onion flavor crisps, like Pringles and stuff. She was like, "What?" So short. Sure. It's, it's only because I never ever eat crisps. Two years down the line, and I still get confused about what he likes and don't, doesn't like. The fact he ate those noodles has just blown my life away. I'm and still trying mouth. to work out what you like. When you put it on your tongue, it's almost like the flavor and slides off, and they're just. Oh I mean. yeah. It's weird, isn't it? That description was amazing. <laughs> I feel like you'll enjoy these more than me. I love crisps, me. The next question comes from Turtle Bombs. What made you both realise that you realise that you wanted to be with each other? Lulu Beaverful. What moment did you know Adam was the one for you? When I saw your sexy pictures on Tinder. Well, from the start, I thought you were hot, obviously. I thought your kind of personality almost like came out in your pictures and stuff. I wouldn't have asked you out if I didn't think you were like a really cool person. Okay, I'm going to edit their question. When did you realise that you loved me? Feeling like you're a, a, like a best friend as well as a partner. That's a big thing for me. Enjoying the company. Being able to feel that I can be myself around you. Kind of to do with that. Um, finding you super hot. Um, I'm just just in, like liking your style and <laughs> personality and yeah. Yeah. And no baggage. 
when I realised that there was like there wasn't any underlying oh. issues that you had where you were gonna like turn crazy later on or anything. I think that's a big part of it as well because I've had things like that in in the past. I didn't want to end up going out with someone, loving it, enjoying it, and then kind of being a l disillusioned to the fact that mm. there's, there's gonna be things that bite us in the arse later on. Great. So when I felt as if like everything just feels right. When I'm, things I'm really settled happy. a bit more, yeah. there's not as many butterflies, that's when it's so more love. When you met my family and you all got along really well, it, that's like a big kind of heartwarming thing as well, so that probably boosted it right it's up. important. Yeah. The <clears throat> moment that you got kicked out your flat, I know it was a horrible time, but I do think that that moment, I think really, I mean, I loved you before then, but I, it really confirmed that then because we had not, you had no idea what you were doing, where you were gonna go or anything, but I was like sure that you weren't gonna just fuck off and go and live with your family or something. Yeah. Oh, this isn't working, this isn't convenient for me anymore. This isn't gonna work out between us two. I don't know, I don't know what it felt. I guess it was cool, it was cool, it wasn't cool. <laughs> I guess there's the thing of like, when you see someone you think you know in a dire situation and seeing how they react to that as well, kind of shows you their true colours in a way. That's true. Uh -huh. so that probably showed you who I really was. Yeah. Albeit a more depressive side of me. <laughs> if I didn't have you, I would have struggled a lot more through that. So if I was on my own, if I didn't have you, I probably would have just went up to my family. Because at that time, apart from you and like friends down here, there's nothing that I've really got down here anymore. I feel as if I've kind of, I feel as if I've kind of got the most out of being down here. I just didn't, I really didn't want to lose you. Things happen for a reason. Yeah. That needed to happen then, when we were together, not when we weren't, because you would have left. I'm supposed to be down here still. For a right, little bit anyway. Right now. <laughs> because the perfect flat's waiting for us in December. All right, Maddie asks on Twitter, does the fact that your relationship is so public online affect you two in a negative way? The only slight tiny little niggle thing is the fact that obviously you need to keep creating content, you need to stream and stuff. Sometimes it gets in a way a tiny bit, but not enough to like cause issues. Like if I'm just not really in the mood or I can't be bothered, I'll have to go out my way to ask Ellie, like, can I not be in the camera, please? A lot of your um, videos are quite raw and like real and stuff. And like, cause I don't hide, things I don't keep secrets you don't keep secrets and that reflects in your videos as well if I was a secretive person I probably would have mm. an issue with it but because I'm not I don't really care like this video right now this is a good example of like it not affecting me in a bad way because I'm happy to tell you guys I'm, an, I'm a bit of an open book so mm. yeah I'm yeah. not really that bothered in fact if anything I think it's quite cool um, everyone has a part of them that kind of wants to share their story and this is a way that I can you being quite a um, straightforward honest chill mainly chill person mm. was needed i think it's gonna sound really ew, gushy but like i didn't realize that i needed that until you came i mean would you say that this relationship is kind of a contrast to your last one a million times yeah but the good thing is you've experienced both sides and you know what you prefer so. and that's why it's so important uh -huh. to appreciate old relationships because you don't realize what you need want until you have what until you don't have something you just reminded me of that kid that um you know what you know it's really on have you ever had a dreams that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you you do that's really thick isn't it yeah blow my neck Oh, this feels like um, we're going back to like the 1800s. Like mm. it's got 1800 on there, but and just went into it a looks like Russians, shop. doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this is what it looks like. I don't know what it's called because I can't read. Cote de l'or. I'm not even gonna try because that's not how it's said. It sounds um, French, <laughs> but it's not. Although it isn't. <laughs> isn't. Oh, it's two. Ah. Sneaky, sneaky. sneaky, sneaky. Oh, it's like Kit Kat. Mm. It smells a bit like Christmas chocolate. Oh, it's just chocolate. I thought it had wafer and I'm more excited now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Do you like that? It looks like what uh, milk chocolate, but it tastes dark. Oh, it tastes like cigarettes. Like ash. <laughs> it tastes ashy. I quite like that. Oh, I think I like that. I've had, like, I've had worse chocolate. It tastes a little bit like an ash <laughs> I love the compliments we're given to um, Belgium mm. food. <laughs> I mean, your noodles were great. But then again, I'm not a big chocolate person, so. Yeah. I've got a good question. It, it is like, um, 
You know, when I say Christmas chocolate, you know what I mean? Mm. Next question comes from Marianne Evie. She says, have you ever had a moment where you thought you two might break up? I've never had a moment where I wanted to break up with you, mm. but there was a moment where I thought you were going to break up with me. Really? Yeah. When you told me that you needed space. <laughs> It was when I was quite mean to you when I was drunk. Oh. I was ready to like pack your things. Oh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't ready in the slightest, but I thought I was like yeah, seeing yeah. the end of the relationship. You're not the nicest person to me when you get very <laughs> drunk on whiskey. Said everyone in so. my life ever. I didn't know that was a thing. See, this is the hidden demon I didn't know was a thing until later oh on God. in the relationship. Alcohol's always been my demon. But it only, like I've, I've noticed it only seems to happen when you drink whiskey though. <laughs> like Jack Daniels. I turn so, into an old man. Have you noticed that I've stopped buying Jack Daniels like the past year? <laughs> oh. So if you if you can drink it moderately and not get hammered, which you can't do, <laughs> and it's not a nice feeling, especially when someone like Ellie that like, is really kind of playful and like attached and like all them nice little things, and all of a sudden she's like, like giving you proper evil looks and like ignoring you and stuff. It's it's horrible. <laughs> You learned your lesson. <laughs> when we first started dating, he was like, what you like um, when you're drunk? Do you turn into a different person? Is there something about you that happens when you're drunk? And I was like, no, what do you mean? I, <laughs> I genuinely remember you asking me this and I was like, fuck, why? Why is he asking me this? Who's told him? I almost I almost wanted you to say, no, I'm, re I'm a really happy drunk. I just get cuddly and stuff. I did say that. Yeah, and my response was like, I'm exactly the same, but I was being honest. I don't usually lie, but you didn't want to I, scare us off. Because yeah, it was early on, and that was like my one touchy place. Alien underscore mother. If it's not too inappropriate, have you both ever fantasized about each other's friends? <laughs> that look on your face is everything. What is it? is in like picturing people naked in that? Yeah. Without the clothes on. I don't think I ever have. Or maybe even <laughs> like when we're sleeping together. No, especially not then. Because I don't have an imagination. Mm. So <laughs> He's not just saying that he genuinely doesn't yeah. have an imagination. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I think I've I've probably I mean I would have looked at your friends and said they're really cute or like hot or anything like that, but thing is though like I don't picture people like naked and stuff. Mm. Like I don't I just don't kinda of delve into that area. Uh -huh. Just personally I just don't. <laughs> Are you needing a drink before you answer yours? Not necessarily full blown fantasized, but. I don't care. Like, you don't have to cover it up with like fl <laughs> fluffy language. Fluffy language. Not, not full on. <laughs> <laughs> I've sort of wondered and like pictured if. How like. I hate this. Yeah, that's it. Cool. <laughs> but you know what the funny thing is? What? If you literally ended it there, I wouldn't be bothered and I'd, I'd finish this video and I'd live a happy life. Who would do <laughs> whereas, that? Whereas if I said that, Ellie would be like, we're not doing anything else until you tell me what you were about to say. So would everyone else watching this video. <laughs> I'm too chill for that. He's too Why would I worry chill? about it? Because I fantasised like one of your friends. But you're not going to do anything, are you? Well, basically, I've I've imagined what it'll be like if a certain friend joined the party. Okay. Is all I'm saying. Okay. Now, do you want to know who? <laughs> well, if you want to tell us. Well, next question. It wasn't because of the person. Hmm. It was just because it would have been convenient and uh, you, you what you know who it was. What flat man? <laughs> it's just like. In the moment, like, there's a guy in the room next door, there's a guy in the bed next to me. What if? Are you saying that? Yeah. Oh, there's so many good questions. Okay, I'm gonna do- Do, do some, do a quick fire round. I was literally just about to say, I'm gonna do a quick fire round. Okay, what's the most romantic thing Adam has ever done for you? He's, you're not- <laughs> I think I'm a romantic person, oh, I... but I frequently get reminded that I'm not. <laughs> he, al <laughs> he almost doesn't have a romantic bone in his body. Maybe romance is literally dead for me. You're very thoughtful, so thoughtful, but, but that's... Is that not romantic? No, no, no. Oh. Roman thoughtful is bringing home milk because you know there's none in the fridge. Romantic is taking me... Is... Taking you to get the milk. No. <laughs> because I love your company so much. Setting up the dinner table out in the garden like I did for our anniversary. Stereotypical like romance. Mm. He's not the type to like stick on a romantic film and like serenade me, massage me. He's never touched. He's never touched me. He's never touched. He's me. never massaged me <laughs> ever. You're like 
gagging for it, aren't you? <laughs> I'm so gagging for romance. So gagging for it. I've asked you to sit out in, in the outside at night and we'll look at the stars with us before. And we were out there for like five minutes and you were like, can we go in now? There's spiders. What? Writing me a love note just mm. because. But then I would say, why would I write you a love note if I can just tell you? That's what I mean, it's logic. That is him. He just <laughs> he just showed everything about his self and why he isn't romantic. But you say I, stuff like that all the time. I don't think it's a bad thing, though. It's no. just a different way of looking at it. Yeah. But I would still see it as romantic, like, telling you those things. But you don't. What? Like, you wouldn't lie on me on the bed and be like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've said things to you before and you've been like, oh, that's really sweet. Okay, he does not not have a roman not, not have a romantic bone in his body. He just doesn't do it enough. I don't do it enough. But is that because I don't yeah. ask for it all the time, I don't oh. crave it and stuff? Or no, I like think it's because you don't react do it, to it yourself. Oh, okay. If he doesn't give it, I don't think he'd really appreciate it, maybe? I do love it. I'd like to be more romantic. Like, you should but... give what you want to be given, mm. but I'm bad with that because I, I <laughs> forget that it's a thing because our relationship doesn't really do that. Are you happy, though? I'm very happy. Like, you can be have so many romantic bones in your body, but you're just, like, a terrible person. Yeah, I feel like I've been in relationships where it's over-the-top romantic mm. that all the other, like, important bits get brushed away because the romance is alive and that's all that matters. So you'd rather it was this way? Yeah, but I'd also like a bit both. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take before you guys had sex? We had our first kind of night together. Both came back to yours, but nothing happened. We just kind of cuddled up and slept, which was yeah. really nice. And then we had our first proper day after that, where we went to see a horror movie. I legit just like asked her if she wanted to come back to mine, because why not? Like, we're adults, we don't have rules. We can do what we want. No. <laughs> the first thing I think of isn't sex. It's just like your company. Like what did go, go through my head was we've talked for a while. We've had this great night together. We've had a great day together. What's stopping us just like being cuddly? Mm. Do you know what's through my head? What? I really want to go to his because I can be more comfortable and myself there because we were like on a date in a <clears throat> pub and stuff like face to face. It's scary mm. as eye contact. But I knew if I went to yours. It's less intimidating. Yeah, we'd be like probably lying in bed talking. I just knew I'd be more comfortable at your house. Yeah. And we nearly did, but we left it because we're being good. And because Ellie asked him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I immediately like said, yeah, that's absolutely fine. I was right? like, I don't feel good. This is too soon. I don't feel comfortable. Yeah, but it's funny because you were initiating. <laughs> and then you hit a point where you you were like, you kind of had a little bit of a kind of a panicky thing going on. And you were like, obviously through your head, you were like, I probably shouldn't be doing this. And then I was just trying to like calm you down and say, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't expecting anything. Like, don't worry about it. We can just cuddle up and then we'll see how things go like in the future. Yeah. And so yeah, that happened. And we just cuddled for the night again, which was really nice. And I think the next time we actually did. Because I think maybe like my response to that. Showed and you get lot. Yeah. I was worried that I was going to like dive in the deep end. And then you were later on going to be like, wait, we're not a thing. When did you ever get the impression that we were going to date? This yeah. is just for fun. I didn't like the idea of me sleeping with someone who didn't end up being a relationship at least. You felt somewhat invested with. Yeah. And they weren't. Yeah. Just the way I am. Yeah. And look where we are now. At it like rabbits. At what moment did you decide that you wanted to live together and who brought up the topic? I think it was me, just because I thought... It was convenient. <laughs> well, that, I feel like that's a bit of a bonus thing as well. We see each other most days and we've always seen each other most days of the week. There's only a few times where I've really felt that I need a little bit of space. Yeah. And it probably got to a year, a year and a half when I started thinking and kind of mentioned to you. Like, mm -hmm when we moved in together and all that sort of we stuff. We started saying like, if we, like if we live together, language, yeah, yeah. and then it went to when we lived together. Yeah, when would you actually want to? Especially at the point when it was coming up to me getting kicked out of the flat. I was like, why don't you move in for a bit? Mm. It'll help me out with um, the process of moving yeah. like, in terms of financial and stuff. And it'll be really nice for us to have my final moments in the flat, <laughs> like together. Rest in peace. Yeah. It got Going us a little to... taste of it, didn't yeah. it? It kind of bummed me out that um, the whole first moment of saying let's live together wasn't like romantic. Not because mm. of us, but in general, like I had this big high hopes of like it's going to be so great when we say let's live together, like in films, because I've never done that with anyone. Because you've got no worries, everything's great. I thought Fashion. there was going to be that big moment of oh my god, let's do it. A bit why like not? a proposal, because I've like never. Like when someone's like let's have kids. Yeah. And they're like that never happens. Yeah, why not? Like no one ever says let's start, let's 
just have children. Yeah. I mean, it might do, but it's yeah. quite rare. It usually just happens by accident or like you start making small changes to make it more possible. I, I thought, I guess I have a lot of fairy tale mindset. Mm and mm. I'm very unrealistic and dreamy. So I was like, when's the moment he's gonna ask me? But that's not really how it works. Mm. I felt as if I was ready to move in with you. Yeah. And I'd like to. It would really help both of us. And mm. we'd love it. Will you move in with me? <laughs> Here's the key. To my heart and house. Did you enjoy that very long mukbang? I enjoyed the food and I enjoyed this because it's been a while since we filmed. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure you give it a like. Subscribe to my channel to be notified every time I make a brand new video. Join me on social media such as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thank <laughs> you to my uh, Patreons for, for supporting me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in two. See ya. Yeah. What's up, Doc?